gods of the theater smile on us you who sit up there stern in judgment smile on us you who look down on actors and who doesn't bless this yearly festival and smile on us we offer you some welcome to episode 26 of thespis in the green room it's melanie here we are back after an unexpected hiatus last week. Things got a bit crazy with me traveling and some hiccups with the plans. But we are back this week and we have a fabulous conversation to share with you. I had a chance to sit down and chat with performance artist, the mad artist, Rodrice Cardell. Rodrice is an actor, singer, director, and artist. He is based in the upstate of South Carolina and is a graduate of Winthrop University. He has been seen on various stages around the country. He toured with professional children's theater Climb Theater of St. Paul, Minnesota, and has recently been seen on stage at Center Stage in Greenville. Rodriguez is best known as the Mad Artist, a performance artist delivering a high-energy infusion of music, movement, and spoken word, all while creating original paintings. Audiences have seen the Mad Artist perform and create while wearing a motorcycle helmet at assorted festivals and events, including Spring Fling in Spartanburg, where he will return again this year. The Mad Artist can be found in residence at the West Main Artist Co-op in Spartanburg, and it's here where collectors can also purchase his original pieces. He can also be found online at his website, themadartist.com, and that is spelled with three Ds, so the mad, M-A-D-D-D, artist.com. He's also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Coming up, Rodriguez, the mad artist, will be presenting at TEDx in Greenville on Friday, March 29th. For more information about that event, visit TEDxGreenville.com. Now let's have a listen to our chat. Welcome to the Green Room. Ah, thank you for having me. It's so great to have you here. So tell us a little bit about how you got your start in theater and performance. Do you remember your first show? Oh, wow. That takes me way, way, way back. <laughs> um, actually, I fell in love with a stage when I was in elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, I was performing at Westview Elementary. Um, that's all a part of uh, District 6. And um, they had me in this like drug free program. But what we used to do, we used to take little skits and everything and, and, and songs and put performances on at our school. Um, it was part of that D.A.R.E. program, I think. Uh -huh. yeah. so, um, so I did that. And then going through, you know, elementary to middle school, I got involved with a lot of the, you know, the theater there. Miss um, Black, uh, she taught at uh, Dawkins uh, Middle School. And that was pretty much my real introduction into theater. Mm -hmm. um, so Miss Black had got us, you know, doing, you know, improv and also getting us to pick up a script and, you know, putting little things on in, in class. And I really enjoyed it. And then I remember um, falling in love with this improvisational theater troupe called Imagine That. And mm -hmm. um, I remember sitting in the audience, watched them perform because what they would do is it was like this part of this teen summit program uh, that they was bringing through the middle schools and everything. And so imagine that performed. And I remember just like, oh, my gosh, they're talking about everything that means something. And I was just one of those kids. It was like I knew that there were other issues outside of school. And so they were real to me. And so I was like, they're using real emotions. They, they, they're playing people that mean something. Like, I wanted to be a part of it. And I ended up auditioning. And they ended up 
bring me a part of their troop. I think I was there my eighth grade year going into my ninth grade. Mm-hmm. And I was able to audition and I got to be around these high school students that I had always seen on stage. And I, I knew all of their scenes and everything. And they were like, how does kid already know the, the scenes and breakdown? Because I used to study them so mm. much. And so that was pretty my first my introduction into acting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just kind of stuck with it since. Oh, man, that's a great start. Yeah, that's a really great start. And I'm so thrilled to hear that the school system did that because we're fighting now to keep arts in schools, oh, right? So wow. this is a testament, people, <laughs> to keeping the arts in the school. Well, it's important because at the end of the day, I was always trying to not be in the street and doing, right. you know, negative things because I was surrounded by it as a kid. Right. And so... You have this child that's trying his best not to get involved in the surroundings and trying to beat the system. Mm -hmm. And so in order for me to do that, I had to be introduced to the arts. I had to be introduced to something else outside of the culture that I lived in. Mm -hmm. And so that was me trying to fight. And I think that's really important for those kids because I was in District 6 for a while. Went to District 7 and came back to District 6, mm-hmm. which I, you know, I love my my grandparents for doing that and, you know, keeping me there. So it allowed me to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, from there, I ended up getting into speech and debate. I got mm. into chorus and then got into honors theater. And because I continued to really, you know, try to make something of myself. Yeah. And you have. Well, I appreciate That's that. Brilliant. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. And and you've over the years you've integrated music and art. How did all of this come together and, and how did it come to the fruition of the mad artist? <laughs> um so so since I had started, you know, doing theater as a kid, my grandfather kind of instilled in me music. Mm-hmm. Uh, my grandfather was a guitar player and um I remember their church needing a drummer and I used to sit in in the crowd all the time at church and like I would take my fan, the fans, because it was all, you know, in in churches, it was, they didn't always have the greatest AC or so. So everyone had the church fan or so. Uh And so I would break the fan part off and I would use the sticks and play, like pretend like I was playing air drums Mm -hmm. for, (laughs) (laughs) and um, I would just always watch someone in the corner and and then one day my grandfather was like, come on up here and, you know, beat these drums. And I got, I remember sitting behind the, the, the set and picking up the drum stick, the sticks and watching him strum his guitar while I learned to mimic the beat. Mm-hmm. And so from there, it got me into the music. And from there, I, I started noticing, oh, wow, this there's connection between all these art forms because I was using those art forms just to keep me busy. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, what happened was throughout going through college and getting out to tour professionally and everything, I noticed as an artist, I I had to grow financially also. Mm-hmm. And so it was always important for me to be able to, OK, I'm getting out of this, this, this show. Let me make sure that I have something else backed up. And so when I moved back from Minnesota, I noticed that there was a need for a music scene here in the Spartanburg area. Mm. Um, I had noticed that it was only one sided and there was a culture that wasn't being tapped into. And here I I wanted to perform my music, but there were no bars or no performance venues for me to perform at. And it made it really difficult for me to book shows. Mm. Um, And so I pretty much came up with this idea because I had already started painting how about I start doing this on the street and how about I take the everything that I learned within theater and understanding what guerrilla theater is and understanding in order for people to realize that there's something bubbling in their culture, you have to throw it right in their face. Mm -hmm. And I, I decided that it was really important for me to make a stance to say, hey, there's a culture that's not being tapped in here. But in order for me to get where I need to go, I'm going to take something that everyone can enjoy at once, which is me painting on the sidewalk. And for me to get that buzz in order to make a mark, in order for those doors to open, for them to understand that there's a culture that is missing in this area. Mm. Oh, I love that. Yeah, just put it in their face, right? <laughs> yeah, you have to put it in their face. Um, and, and which it, it, it makes it it makes it hard also because you're swimming 
against the flow of the stream. Right. And right. so I'm I'm cur- currently always swimming the opposite direction because I have someone has to tell you someone has to make it clear that hey there's a culture of people that we're missing there's mm-hmm. a culture of art that we're missing and we need it here and i want to i want to really be a part of that movement and and help make that happen for other artists mm. And you touched a little bit on that you came back from Minnesota. So let's back up a little bit because <laughs> there's a whole lot that happened between uh, high school and, and coming back and, and tapping into this thing that Spartanburg is and realizing that there's some gaps here that needed filling. Mm-hmm. What happened kind of in, in the in-between there? So after I graduated college, I got I started getting a little offers uh, for me to, to act professionally mm-hmm. um, because I had been doing it for a while. I got an offer from a theater in Minnesota for me to come up, and I I toured for about two and a half, three years up there. While I was up there, I got introduced to guys that played with Prince. Mm. So I got the I got to sing like background vocals for these guys. It was Tamara in the scene and Maserati, and I was able to you know start vocalizing with them and getting to know them as artists and how it wasn't a facade or anything they were putting on. It was them. And that's what other people fell in love with as far as that 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 time frame that they came up in. And so I think that kind of lit a match for me where I was just like, wow, OK, it's makes it makes full circle mm-hmm. because I feel like people expect artists to kind of be one sided. It's either you're going to be a painter or that's it. Or you're going to be a musician or that's it. But what if you're all of them? Mm-hmm. So it made it really difficult for me to find my lane because I've spent all my life perfecting my craft in every form if i'm doing music i'm perfecting that in every form if i'm doing acting on stage i want to perfect that in every form like it it just doesn't stop for me because i've become reliant on my talent to feed me Mm -hmm. and so in order for me to make any type of shift i constantly have to make people aware that the mad artist is one thing Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a complete brand by within that. And that's why the mad artist is important because there's other gifted artists out there, mm-hmm. but they only get put into one lane. Right. And I have to make it clear that I am I want to show my showcase all my talent. Yeah. yeah. Did that answer your question? It did. It did. <laughs> and I want to I want to kind of piggyback on that for for our listeners who have not actually seen you perform, aren't familiar with your work. What can they expect if they see you performing somewhere? What does it look like? Well, so there's several perspectives or times where I am performing. So I just finished up Dream Girls not long ago at mm. Center Stage. Right. I got to play Curtis Taylor Jr. Um, which is the the lead male um, that manages the girls. Mm-hmm. And um, that experience, it was great because it was actually my second time performing that same role. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, I have went to Benedict College mm-hmm. and at Benedict, I was able to perform that same role as a freshman. Oh, wow. Which... <laughs> Night and day experience, I would imagine. <laughs> right. And it was pretty awesome because I, I had just graduated high school and I was able to lock in that, that lead role. And I think at the same time, I was uh, the vice president of my freshman class as mm-hmm. well. So I it was really cool. So like I said, going back to center stage, I was able to perform on that stage as an actor. Um, as far as like when people see me out in public as a performance artist, the Mad Artist is a, it allows me to t- tap into myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so as a performance artist is to stay true to what I do is I have to always be honest with myself. And so the way the performances start off is I'm playing music. Um, and that's not just my music, but other artists that I have been inspired by their story. And so I have those music, those records playing while I pull out a canvas in the middle of the street or wherever performance space that I'm at. And I put that helmet on in order for me to be able to tap into myself and be able to have balance when I create on a canvas. Um, it's always something that's organic. It's always something where I'm I'm vibing to the music and using the vibrations from the music in order to orchestrate a, a, a piece. So my my biggest slogan is turning chaos into beauty. Mm. Um, 
and I think that's where my life is, you know, where I've been through a lot of stuff where I'm always trying to see the color at the end of the the rainbow or just in, in order to be able to see more positivity within my own life. Um, so that's what I do. I, I take a madman that, you know, uses paint, that uses music in order to get people to see that it all there's always a bigger picture within because it's a process. Mm. That process of creating is natural and it's organic and everyone can be an artist, but it's only so many of us that choose this lifestyle and that's it. Yeah. And all through your life, you are always constantly here. Hmm. You sure you want to be an artist? Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. It doesn't stop. <laughs> now, you brought up the helmet, so I'm going to ask about that. Okay. So w- when you do your performance art, you're usually wearing a motorcycle helmet. Mm-hmm. That's one of your signature identifiers mm-hmm. for the mad artist. What's that about? Why, why a helmet? Uh, so the helmet, um, it came into play about uh, going almost four years now. Um, so I had a really bad bike accident, mm. motorcycle. I have to make sure I clarify that for everyone. <laughs> yeah, I ended up going down, which was not fun. Um, no. <laughs> but I knew in the beginning when choosing to be on a motorcycle, I had to make sure I took you know safety precautions by wearing my helmet and wearing my gear. I always wore my gear no matter what. And I think there's a lot of bikers out there that want to hit the roads and look cool. And looking cool is no longer cool once you hit that that pavement. Mm. And so my whole thing was always to get other bikers to wear their gear, um, for people to lay off texting and driving and focus on the road. Because in one split second, anyone's life can change. Mm. And I constantly have to try to remind people, especially bikers, some of the technology is getting a little ridiculous, um, where I've seen some of my biker friends, they'll have a, a post on their bike and they're allowing themselves to be like snap, you know, they'll Snapchat or go live on Facebook mm. in order to impress people. And it, it really, it, it hurts my feelings and it's because I'm like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Mm. So I'm constantly trying to remind people to stay focused in that moment. So, but the biker helmet, you know, not just besides that, it also is to get people to understand, like I said, that the Mad Artist is one brand. It's all, you know, any talent that I have, it always goes back to that helmet. Um, if it wasn't for the helmet, I wouldn't be here. And I still wear that helmet when I perform. It's the mm-hmm. same helmet I went down in. Now, I have other helmets that I've created, you know, as part of my line of mm-hmm. helmets. But at the same time, I wore that helmet because it saved me. So, yeah, that's a little bit about the helmet. That's amazing. I love that you incorporate that because it is it does signify this saved me. This is me. And I wouldn't be here without this. Mm -hmm. This this art that you're witnessing would not be happening without this. Exactly. So I love that. That's, yeah, thank that's you. A really good message. Thank you, thank you. And it's a good message to wear your helmet. And people who aren't on bikes, get off the phone. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> that drives me crazy. Right, right, <laughs> right. It's right. so dangerous. Mm-hmm. So dangerous. Well, I think we're just so accustomed to it now. It's just such a part of our life. The phone is such an extension of us now. Mm-hmm. Gosh, it is something we need to work on as a group mm-hmm. for sure. So you kind of touched on this a little bit. Can you expand a little bit? What inspires you to create? Who are your inspirations? What are your inspirations? What drives you to do this? So uh, when I first started really painting is because um, it was uh, this young lady uh, that I had met and she always painted African-American women with afros. And I just always remember just kind of being fascinated with that because, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, Around the area, especially with me as an artist, I was just like, oh, I don't know anybody, you know, around my age that were creating, you know, art that looked like them. And, you know, and so she kind of inspired me to pick up a paintbrush because I was like, well, there's also other things that I would like to paint. And um, so I kind of I kept doing that for a full year and then I, I got sick. Um, and this is right around the same time I ended up going down on a bike accident and so painting was the only way for me to pay for me to survive. And so I use that constantly. I'm, I'm painting to pay a bill. I'm, I'm painting to be here. And so 
I I hold on that constantly because it's real and it also helped me get through anxiety. It helped me also get through depression. It helped me also get overcome PTSD. And so I paint in order to save myself I, or I paint in order to create for myself. I create for myself first and then it's for others to to partake in and watch that process. It's therapy. Hmm. So, um, and I encourage anybody out there that's looking for an outlet or looking to um, grow within themselves is always picking up something else. Uh, you know, watch YouTube. I, I constantly just kept painting all year and every year, every day, just constantly kept painting, kept painting because painting is what I felt like would save me at the end of the day. Mm. So that's why I constantly continue to do that because I know that there's kids out there, there's adults out there that may not have anything to look forward to. And so creating gives them that every day. It finds a new light within yourself because when you're painting, you have to spend time with yourself. Mm -hmm. And there's no other, unless you allow it, other distractions to come into that circle, unless you spend time with yourself in order to get whatever is frustrating you out or whatever it is that you just need to put that into something else. Even if it's not a conversation back and forth with someone else, you're spending time with self. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to create the best thing because you admire something that came out of you. Yeah, that's good. It says a lot of in internal inspiration. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that makes some, for some really rich art. Yeah. It really does. Yeah, it really, really, really does. Thank you. Yeah. So what are your goals with The Mad Artist? What would you like to see happen with it? The Mad Artist, I, I plan for that to be a household name. <laughs> I, I really do Good. um you know I, I i plan for you know other artists to um want to work with me and to um grow their brands um because you know i've been here from you know the start and that's when you hold on to something that's that dear to you and you make it important to you i think later on other things other things will transpire from that and will make you grow i think every day i get inspired by other things and other artists that are out there and I want to have a successful artistic business which a lot of people down south may not believe that artists can survive off just their art but I want to change that mm. you know there there's so many people that are creative and there's um, avenues for them to put their work out but people won't support them like they should and I want to be that hub for people to come to to help get their career going in the right path and so you know, I don't know if that says everything that I possibly could, you know, forecast for my life, but I want to leave it there where mm. I want to grow and have a possibly a management team to help manage other artists. Um, and so there's so many other things that I would like to, but I can't give my <laughs> secrets away. <So laughs> Stay tuned, everyone. Stay more, tuned. more to come. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but those are great goals. Those are fantastic goals. Thank you. What are some of the challenges of being a performance artist? It seems it's a very unique way to perform, and it's very it seems very independent. What are mm -hmm. some What are some of the challenges you encounter? I think those challenges come with if you don't have the financial support that you need, if um, it makes it a little difficult, but you have to get extremely creative. And I think most of the time, when the funds aren't there, the creativity, the passion bleeds through. Mm. Um, because you you have to stay true and you constantly have to force yourself to get through it no matter if the money isn't there and constantly be your own, um, I guess, cheerleader. Mm. Or you have to find inspiration in small things to encourage you to move forward. I think also the, the other challenges is uh, people may not be receptive to it because they're not familiar and people fear the unknown sometimes mm -hmm. or they won't give new things a chance um and you have to realize that that in this world things are also always going to revolve like it's going to evolve eventually evolve into something new and it may not be the standard for that time but it eventually evolves into it i remember when people didn't want to you know initially text because mm -hmm. i think originally i think 
it cost you to text people. It did, yeah. And then so people wouldn't just call me, just call me. <laughs> but now, now it's turned into everything's communicating through a text message. Right. So I think at the at the end of the day, someone has to be there to to make that conversation happen. And so I I think that's kind of where I'm at. Mm. Um uh, the other things, uh, constantly trying to get people to pay you for your service mm. um, and see that it is a business at the end of the day and it's not a charity, mm-hmm. you know, it, and having to make sure that other artists know how to have that conversation to sit down. Now we're talking business. This is the black and white of everything. In order to do that, you have to understand the business world. And I think that's something that lights thereof here, giving the artist the knowledge to run their their business. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of them give up. A lot of them go somewhere else. And it's very easy for artists to pack up and move to New York or L.A. And I think that's the story of all artists that end up, you know, I want to make it. And they go out there. Sometimes they make it. Sometimes they don't. But what about those artists that do stay around? How are you, you know, making sure that they're a part of the conversations of growth and they're part of the conversations of being paid? Because I think people constantly want artists to give their gifts up for free. And you don't know what it took for them to even arrive and be at that Mm. event or to be at that table to talk. Because some artists do have day jobs and they take off in hopes to further what they have going on. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be a part of that conversation because this is what I do. Right. And I'm building a brand just like any business that is here or Uh, around the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's a conversation I feel like I've had a lot lately, especially coming back from... You know, I was in a big city and moving back to the Spartanburg. Mm-hmm. That conversation about this is a legitimate business and this can be an economic driver if if you can see that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is hard, especially for non-artists, to kind of understand that. Mm-hmm. And they, they do ask a lot of times for reduced prices or free services. Um, and it's like, I wouldn't ask you to do your job for free. Right. You know, this is our job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what we do. We've invested training and time into developing these crafts and these skills that we have. Mm-hmm. So pony up. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I that's exactly that's that's the, what I'm normally trying to sit down and have that conversation um, because I do get calls and I do get people that want to book me or bring me out. But you also have to understand that this is what I do in order to to take care of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it's a conversation. You tapped on it a little bit with um, getting other artists to understand the business side of things. But mm-hmm. And I think that's a continued conversation that needs to happen as well, because the flip side is there are a lot of artists who are like, well, OK, I'll just I'll come perform for free at your event or I'll donate my art for free for your charity event or whatever it is. You know, <laughs> I mean, they'll just do it because uh, they think, oh, well, I got to do something. I need some kind of exposure. I need some kind of opportunity. There has to be a line where exposure. OK, great. Because if it wasn't for some of the platforms that I was able to get on without having to pay to be there or those events is what took my, you know, what I do to the next level is because I did take a leap of faith and I decided, okay, I'm going to put myself out in front of these people in hopes to later on that turns into a conversation of, hey, this is our how we're going to pay you. So I think for any artist that's starting, you do have to realize that you do have to put down some time and you never know how long that time is going to last. If you stay consistent at it, it can possibly speed the process up. But at the same time, if you're not consistent enough, it will not happen. So the conversation has to be, okay, I have to devote this amount of time into my business in order for people to see that I am a legitimate business Mm -hmm. and getting things in writing and getting things prepared and not halfway doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I think that's when the conversation starts happening. Okay, this is how much I need to be paid and compensated for. Mm -hmm. But until you lay down the foundation of saying, Hey, you guys, I'm here, then don't always expect a paycheck Mm -hmm. because someone has to put the groundwork in and that's always going to start with you. Yeah. So everyone, but then like I said, businesses should also know that, sowing a seed into that artist will help help them grow and it'll give them better supplies it'll help them get what they need in order for them to be successful 
you can't plant a seed and not a water and expect it to grow. And so how long before then you, you take notice that, Hey, this is how we assist you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a good conversation that we need to keep having exactly with the, with the whole community. Exactly. For sure. <laughs> well, cause artists, artists bring culture. Absolutely. And we expose the culture of our, you know, our own identities and then also what we're surrounded by in order to tell those stories, you have to have someone from that perspective. Everything can't be mechanical and everything can't be, you know, commercialized. There has to be some type of soul that's put in it. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, you have to be in tune with artists that have that see that vision in order to keep more people coming here. Why would anyone want to build here if the culture isn't alive? Right. And that goes for any city. Right. And artists are the people that keep that thriving. We're the innovators. Right. It's also, it, it infiltrates our everyday life. I think people forget how much creativity and, and artists and their skill sets actually are everywhere. Mm -hmm. When you turn on the television, you're watching TV, films on TV, mu the music you hear, the, the marketing that goes into just the commercials. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all art. You open up a magazine, you see print ads, that's art. Somebody has studied shapes and colors and composition to put together an attractive picture that gets your attention and sells whatever they're selling. Exactly. In you know, it's art. So I think people forget that it's, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Interior design, architecture, just all of it. It's everywhere. Exactly. You, you walk through it every day. So value the artists. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, it's crazy because I spent four years, you know, I, I was originally at Benedict College. And then I, I transferred to Winthrop. And I'm and we're going to go back just a little bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So since we're talking about, you know, what came with that and studying and why the artist should be appreciated at the time is I went through school struggling with dyslexia, with along with anxiety and everything. And I was I was labeled as a kid that wasn't able to go to college mm. and that was not capable of doing that. And I ended up getting into the university that that guidance counselor told me that I couldn't get into. Mm. And so I worked really hard and I graduated and I, I studied theater originally. And, you know, it's funny because I didn't go to school to be a, a painter. I just learned it on my own. But it's just being exposed to the things that I learned in theater in order to build what I have today, if it wasn't for, you know, learning, there would be no mad artists. Mm. And so those are the times and the years that I've worked and I've studied and I've learned to be who I am as the artist. And that's what you're paying for. Mm -hmm. So that's where that conversation happens. So, it, and there's more that goes along with it, but I think eventually just like anyone else. Mm-hmm just like everyone else just trying to survive that's right <laughs> that's right now those are some of the trials and tribulations but there's got to be some positives some highlights some good times mm -hmm. what have been some of the the highlights and the the successes for the mad artist so far you know i think every day the highlights are when i when i get off a stage and there's some kid asking for my signature oh and, you know, I remember just like, Haha, this is funny. Like someone's actually coming up to me and wanting to show in a way, show me their appreciation for what I've been gifted with. And I think at the end of the day, that has inspired them. Um, I have so many kids that come up to me all the time. Like I started painting now or and it just blows my mind. Like, wow, some some kids saw my show and now that's inspired them to paint. Or if they've seen me on a you know a stage, you know, being an actor, or you know, doing my music, and that's inspired them to want to do something, and it's given them a second chance of, of life or so in a way. It, it gives them that inspiration. So I think those are the highlights that happen because somehow, and while I'm here, I've inspired someone to do something that that may change their life forever. Mm. And so I think that's the biggest accomplishment. It, it doesn't matter about the money or that any type of other success. It's man, I was able to inspire someone while I was here. I think that's more of a testament than any other thing, anything else. Yeah. I think also it's just funny when I do see family or friends, they'll see me on TV or see me anywhere. 
and they immediately will want to shout me out or repost something. And that, that, you know, a lot of times that, that support, it matters because it's like, man, okay, it's, it's effective. I guess this is happening right now. And that, that feels really good. And I can't respond to everybody, mm. <laughs> but I, I, I feel the love. Mm-hmm. Um, even when there's times as artists where you don't feel supported or you don't feel like you're on the right path at all times. But those little small things help so much. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And that kind of leads into my next question, because I wanted to know what were some of the responses that you've gotten? Do you have any specifics that you can point to that you remember that really stand out from an audience or somebody who bought your art? <laughs> um, actually, uh, I have a, a little cousin um, that actually him and his mom try to come to any performance that I have locally. Mm. And he can't he wants a helmet as well <laughs> he also um i ended up using him for a mini video series that i did um when i was introducing myself to the west main artist co-op it was called the sound of color and uh Jaylen was able to come through and see that and everything but he was he played the younger me ah in the video um and we got to go shoot at our old house the house that I grew up in. And so he got to play the younger me. His mom even cut his hair like mine for the (laughs) shoot and stuff. And it was just really cool because it was just like, that's what support from family feels like. And, and for, you know, Jalen being able to look up to me and say, Hey, you know, I want to be an artist. And for him to see, okay, wow. Like this is what my big cousin does. And I constantly like am reminded of that. What's crazy is his uncle passed away years ago. He was taken from our family and um, and he will never be able to meet him. Mm. And, you know, I, I could go into details about that story. But every day I put on that helmet, I'm reminded that my cousin Donnell, you know, he's not here. But it's an, important for me to leave that legacy of black men do matter and mm. kids lives and any any family that has lost someone, you know, at someone else's hand is so hard. And I remember being young when I experienced that as well. But I'm, every day I put that helmet on, I'm always reminded of Jalen mm. and to be there for him. And not to get all, you know, I, you know, I hate to, you know, change the mood of that. But that's still that light that I'm still holding on yeah. to. And that is something that I'm always inspired by. In order to keep doing this, you know, someone has to be um, that life for the world. Yeah. Or for somebody. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. No, that is. It's a positive. Mm-hmm. It comes out of some not positive, right. but it, it's a positive that you can be that role model. Yes. Yeah. Oh. What are some of the personal goals? You've talked a little bit about the brand and kind of where you'd like to see that go. Do you have any personal goals for your artistic growth? I I want to get my music out on bigger platforms. Mm. Um, I I have been through quite a few things that have kind of hindered me from being able to release as much music as I want to. That was the reason why I came back down here mm. from being in Minnesota. I had got offered a record deal, uh, but I had to turn it down because it wasn't the right deal. Mm. And so I'm constantly trying to get that music out. And so hopefully in, you know, within the next year, I'll be able to release that album and release the music. And my game plan is to want to get more out to more schools and tell kids about my story and help inspire them. And then I want to put myself out there more. Um, And then also um, another ultimate goal is to be in, you know, movies Mm -hmm. and, you know, I've been on, you know, a few television shows and I've been able to do that, but I'm I'm trying to, you know, hit a little bit more mainstream and actually perform and do a movie. Um, So I want to work on a bigger platform, Mm -hmm. but that that's definitely a goal of mine. Yeah. It's a good goal. And it's an excellent segue to TEDx Greenville, which is coming up for you. Right. Um, that how did you get involved? You've been tapped to present there. How did you get involved in all that? That still blows my mind right now. <laughs> so I think it was sometime last year, and I just went on a whim. And one of my friends, they ended up messaging me, and um, they were like, "Rodrigue, there's a contest that's going on right now. 
Um, and we will like, I think it'll be a great avenue for you to present your work and, you know, kind of tell your story. And so I submitted to, um, the event and I had been waiting cause I had also been submitting my work to other things and other festivals. And I didn't know what was going to bite. I really mm. didn't. And so I just, I pretty much submitted my work, submitted what I was capable of doing and, I get a phone call from Ted Edson. It's like, hey, we're really interested in bringing you on. And I was just blown away because I think they, they fell in love with my story. And um, and then the talent came later. And so I, I'm, I'm really excited because it's just spending so much time sacrificing in order to get my message out to the world. It's just crazy now that I'm, I actually have a platform to, to say something. Yeah. And I think as any artist, I think it is for important for people to know your message and know what you stand by and because that can reach the masses. And I think it's really important for us to always have that voice. Mm. I mean, a, a painting on the wall is cool, but at the same time, if you knew my message, if you knew what I've gone through in order to be there, then I think you would believe in what I'm doing more. Paintings are awesome. I love painting. I love painting. But the message is what I'm really trying to to get out. Hmm. What can TEDx goers expect at the presentation? Will it be a typical mad artist performance or a little <laughs> different? Or is it... uh, you know, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm right now like the, the painting is going to be probably one of my largest pieces that I'll be performing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so I've actually built the 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 canvas myself. I stretched the canvas, you know, with, with some, you know, help of other people's hands and everything. And it's just exciting because it's from the start to finish. And people are going to be able to see me in my natural element and me just creating and being real. And I think what I have to say after you know whatever I do, whatever I create, I think I, I hope that message reach, reaches the masses. So, I'm sure it will. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, sure really, I'm really excited about you know being chosen to to bring my talent to that stage. Um, yeah, it's gonna be phenomenal. Thank you. Looking forward to. I don't know if I'm gonna be able because I noticed I went online today and I think it's already really difficult to get tickets. Wow. I think I saw that it's pretty difficult to get a ticket to the live event. But, of course, there's video streaming mm -hmm. available. you got to get a ticket to that, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, gotta, there's access for that as well. But um, there is opportunity to see it. And, of course, hopefully down the line after the, the main event, maybe we'll be, get to see it on YouTube or some other platform like that. Oh, for sure. As soon as I get <laughs> any of the uh, footage, it'll go live on my fa on my Facebook or any of my social media platforms for people to check out, um, which is at The Mad Artist. And The Mad Artist is one word. And you spell mad with three Ds. Um, so if you're you know, interested in my story and what I have to do and my artwork, you can always catch me on any social, map, uh, social media platform. That's right. He's all over social media and you're very active on it, which is fantastic. <laughs> we are very up to date. <laughs> when I can good. be. It's good. No, you're great about it. You're really great. Um, uh, yeah. And right now I'm getting ready for Spring Fling as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, uh, I have a concert that I put on each year. Last year was the first. Uh, it was called the Mad Art Tour. And this year uh, the Mad Art Tour will be um, on April the 27th. And so right now we're locking in all the artists, um, which pe people can submit. Um, it's, uh, you can go on my social media and get that information if you want to submit in your music. Um, and that platform was it goes back to the exact reason why I was here. Remember how I told you that there was no platform to perform on? Right, right. That's what I do with the Mad Art Tour oh, is make sure that artists have a uh, avenue for them to put their music in front of the community. And that's going to be happening at Spring Fling. Yeah, that's the Spring okay, Fling. Okay, Spartanburg, upstate. <laughs> it happens in Spartanburg, but there's no reason you can't drive over from Greenville or Anderson and check out. Exactly. I feel like, I feel like Spartanburg's always going to Greenville for stuff. Come on down to Come Spartanburg. Yeah, Spring Fling is a great <laughs> event. I think yeah. last year was, you know, it was phenomenal. Um, I painted as well during that event mm. um, and then also put on the concert. Uh, they're asking me to do the same this year. And so we'll, we'll see. I, I do... I want to put on a phenomenal show for people to in the community to see that there's excellent talent here. Yes, and there is. There really is. Mm -hmm. And are you going to be involved with the 
the Fringe Festival that's coming up here, the Artist Co-op? <laughs> uh, right now, uh, we are in talks about that right now. Okay. And so the, um, the Fringe Festival is one of the, fir- the first festival. So I definitely want to be involved in it. Um, and we're, we're right now working out logistics on how um, the Mad Art team will be involved. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so we talked to Sandy a couple of weeks ago about that a little bit. So cool. We will keep our eyes peeled. For Please the, do for the Fringe Festival here at the West Main Artist Co-op. Please do. Anything else coming up for you? Uh, right now, just trying to live and find some time <laughs> to breathe and maybe just sip some of this water. I right know. Here. <laughs> I know. Well, you have a full schedule, a lot, a lot going on, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um. I yeah, and I I love being busy. Um. At the same time, you know, it's uh, it's just great. To actually be able to, you know, get to a platform and actually speak and present. So eventually just check out my website at, you know, www.themadartist.com and you can see any upcoming events that I have going on. Um, If you're also interested in artwork, I have artwork there. You can book your shows through there as well. Um, I do a lot of uh, live entertainment for events and parties. And so I would love to meet you all and there I, there I go. <laughs> and if they're interested in purchasing your art, it's available here at the West at Main Artist Co-op. At the West Artist Main Artist Co-op. Co-op. Yep. Um, so you can personally meet me, um, get the story behind the artwork from the artist. And there's other artists here that present their work as well. Um, so I definitely encourage you to come shop with us. Um, and then also you can, I think it's really cool to be able to meet living artists. Yeah. And so that's, I think, what the West Main Co-op, that's what they provide here. And you get to know the stories. And I think the art has more value. Definitely. It's a great conversation piece because I got to meet the artist. That's right. That's right. So that's in Spartanburg, listeners, the West Main Artist Co-op. And it's on West Main Street in Spartanburg. I'll put the links in with our posting on our our page, our web page. Rodrice, this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you so much for for sitting down and chatting with us today. No problem at all. Thank you all so much for listening. And I thank you, Melanie, for having me. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Awesome. I just want to be next to you. I ain't going nowhere. What a fantastic conversation. It was such a pleasure to visit with Rodriguez and find out more about his work. The music bookending this interview is original Mad Artist music, and you can hear more on his website or YouTube. You may have also noticed a train making its presence known in the background. We did record at the West Main Artist Co-op in Spartanburg, and trains are a rich part of our history and why we are called the Hub City. So an extra dash of Spartanburg for you there. The Mad Artist isn't the only performer trotting the boards this weekend. Here are the show listings for the upstate of South Carolina. In another show In Philly, Boston, or Baltimore A chance for stagecoats to say hello Another opening of another show Another job that you hope at last Now playing in the upstate of South Carolina for the week of March 24th, 2019. Opening this weekend, Spartanburg Little Theater has its annual gala and season reveal with this year's theme, A Summer Night in Santorini. And that's happening Thursday, March 28th at the Chapman Cultural Center in Spartanburg. And on Friday, March 29th, Foothills Playhouse in Easley opens Charlotte's Web and will run on various days through April 14th. Milltown Players in Pelzer opens Pump Boys and Dinettes on Friday, March 29th and runs Thursdays through Sundays through April 14th. South Carolina Children's Theater in Greenville opens A Year with Frog and Toad on Friday, March 29th and runs Fridays through Sundays through April 7th. And continuing this week, Center Stage in Greenville continues Into the Woods on Thursday, March 28th and runs Thursdays through Sundays through April 7th. Warehouse Theater in Greenville continues Power of Sale on Thursday, March 28th and runs on various days through Sunday, March 31st. 
Market Theater Company in Anderson continues How I Became a Pirate on Friday, March 29th and runs Fridays through Sundays through April 7th. Electric City Playhouse in Anderson continues 1959 Pink Thunderbird on Friday, March 29th. This is an evening of two related one-act plays, Laundry and Bourbon and Lone Star. These run through Sunday, March 31st. Jan's Theater Company in Fountain Inn continues The Hunchback of Notre Dame on Friday, March 29th and runs on various days through Saturday, April 6th. Logos Theater in Taylor's continues The Horse and His Boy Friday, March 29th and runs alternating Thursdays and every Friday and Saturday through April 27th. Center Stage in Greenville continues its Fringe Series production of Treehouse on Tuesday, April 2nd and runs through Wednesday, April 3rd. Greenville's Cafe and Then Sums ongoing show, Say What, continues on various days. Alchemy Comedy Theater offers a variety of improv and sketch shows at various times and on various days at Coffee Underground in Greenville. Check the individual theater's websites for more details. Then follow. Hello there, theater people. We hope you are enjoying spending time in the green room. Want to stay updated? Like and follow Thespis in the Green Room on social media. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Thespis G. That's at sign Thespis G. T H E S P I S G. Want to support Thespis in the Green Room? If you like what you're hearing and want to encourage us to continue conversations in the green room, you can become a patron of the show. Visit our Patreon page. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Thespis G. And donate today. No amount is too small and every little bit helps. Patrons will receive special content and audio extras through our Patreon page. Check it out at Patreon.com slash Thespis G. Good night and thank you, whoever. We are grateful you found her a spot on the sound radio. We'll think of you every time she... Special thanks to Dick Stevens of Stevens Magic and Fun. He can be found on Facebook at Stevens Magic and Fun. Thespis would like to extend a big thank you to our fellow podcasters, Teddy and the Bassman, for their help and guidance. Listeners can find Teddy and the Bassman at teddyandthebassman.podbean.com or through podcast players, iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Thespis in the Green Room is a Courageous Crossings production. Music used in this podcast is licensed by ASCAP and BMI. What comes next? You've been freed. And that's it from the Green Room today. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.